Hey guys, it's Phoenix. This is 18W09A, the new 1.13 snapshot that was released a couple of days ago. I'm a little bit late to this. Um, this is the introduction of underwater ruins, and they are fairly common after a bit of searching. If you're near an ocean, they do spawn fairly frequently, and I have one here just extracted. What's more interesting about them is, of course, the loot. Now, I've got to say, uh, the way this has been built into the oceans is phenomenal. So I've run a bit of an experiment that I'll show you in a moment. And there are two uh, types of underwater ruins. You've got the big one and you've got the small one. And the chest loot depends on the type of underwater ruin that you have uncovered. You have a lot of numbers here. Obviously, this is something that requires a bit of reading into and interpreting to determine the percentages and the likelihood of finding an enchanted book or a fishing rod, which are the two, uh, I guess, treasures. First of all, just going to show you the different types from here. This is from a big underwater ruin. These are the different types of chests that you can get. Um, okay, I've run through some enchanted books. So power four, not bad, right? This is from a small underwater chest or underwater ruin. Um, rotten flesh, as you can see, you've got stone axes. These types of items you will not actually get from the big one. So this is kind of trash, um, but you'd rather have the big underwater ruin anyway. So Curse of Vanishing, not the best thing leather tunic that appears in the other one too. Okay, so here we go. So this is a simulation, and essentially you have the different types of items that will show up. And I'll explain each number um, as the uh, simulation progresses. So the total number is the total number of items that are spawning. So it doesn't matter um, what chest it's from, it's just going to break the chest and all the items will just fly out, and those are the types of items that you get. That's the total. The chest total is the number of simulations I've run, so it's 20 times a second. Um, and total over chest total is the number of items per chest. That's a stack, right? You've got two of them in one random number generation. Okay, so that's the, the crux of it. And each value here is a percentage multiplied by 100, just to show you how rare some of these items are, because if I don't do that, these numbers will end up being zero. It's going to round down. So what this means is you're going to get a golden apple 0.39% of the time. Now, that's pretty low, right? It's not actually that low because each chest has multiple items. Um, so what this means is it's not strictly that times 12 because that's not how probability works. You can't have 1 times 100, which means you're going to get 100% of the time. Uh, this is probably less than 2 or 3%, got to say, uh, if you run a Bernoulli trial. Uh, golden helmet, roughly the same, a little bit higher, leather chest plate, roughly the same. So you've got the, uh, the armor items, pretty low. You don't want them anyway, they're quite trash. Uh, the emeralds, quite useful, but village trades are trash anyway. Enchanted book and fishing rods are the two, I guess, uh, prime items, the premium items, right? Um, they're not overly rare, uh, and they're not even that good anyway. But I think if you're really looting dungeon chests, the enchanted book is... The, uh, the sole purpose of looting dungeon chests. Um, but a fishing rod is twice as popular. Um, it's 4.56%. Uh, Enchanted book is 2.34%. Um, golden nuggets, coal, and wheat are very uh, frequently spawning, very common. All right, so we've passed 5,000 iterations. Um, you're not going to see a lot of change in these numbers anymore. Uh, wheat is around 29%, coal 28%, gold nuggets 24%. Fishing Rod 4.5%, Enchanted Book 2.3%, and again, I just want to say that these numbers, while they're low, you're going to have more, uh, you're going to have multiple iterations of these while you're running through a chest as the loot table is generated. So, um, because you're going to have around 12 items per chest, 11 to 12, uh, these numbers will bump up a little bit by nature. I guess you're going to have a bit more of an understanding as well, it's actually not a lot of items. You have a bit more of an understanding as you run through these sort of things. So this is just a block data command or data merge block uh, command now uh, that will uh, modify the block data of this chest to generate this loot table. So um, you can see that I can just run through this about five times or so. There we go. And okay, that's kind of a bad book, but uh, <laughs> I didn't really, I didn't actually add that into the system. And as you can see from here, the function is enchant randomly. So what this sort of means is you're going to have almost every single enchantment possible on this item. Um, they didn't actually add some qualifications to it. You're going to have some really bad enchantments sometimes, sometimes really good. Um, so the way this sort of works, this system, is really simple. I'm just going to break the chest underneath, 
and the items will fly out. Every time each uh, each item that flies out will add a score of one. And then I'm just going to divide it over the total and then give you a percentage. So I've multiplied each one by 100 so you can see just how rare each one is. Um, and, uh, you know, remove the rounding issues as much as I can. Hopefully you guys got an understanding of what the loot is like for these underwater ruins. They are an amazing addition to the game. I have to say 1.13 is turning out to be a monumental update. It's going to bring back a lot of people into the game because the oceans just look so different now, so much more life to it, it makes so much more sense. I'm going to tip my hat to Mojang. Thank you so much for this update. This is the update that Minecraft probably desperately needed. So thank you all for watching as well. Leave a like, subscribe for more creative content and news updates. Take care.